Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we'll be taking the part two of the population ecology. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe and press the notification bell so that you can get a notification whenever I post a new video. In the part two of the population ecology, we'll be taking, talking, uh, looking at the method of estimating population size. And we'll be looking at the two major ways, which is the quadrant method, capture mark and recapture method. There are other ways, but we'll be discussing this. Now, we'll start with the quadrant method. The quadrant method is basically used to estimate organisms that are either stationary, sensor, or they are very slow moving. In some cases, they use them to estimate the population size of plants in certain areas. So, we'll take a look at the formula for estimate using the quadrant method. This is the formula. This is actually what we estimate the population to be estimated. That is the n. The one you want to estimate, the population of the area you want to estimate. Then this is the total study area. For example, we are in a dose state. We want to estimate the plant of a particular species in a dose state. Then this is the area of what? The quadrant. This is example of a quadrant. Example of a quadrant. Now, Please take note that the number of organisms, the average number of organisms in this quadrant, you can decide to take maybe 15 or even 50 samples in different locations in a dose state. Now, the average number of organisms, let's assume that the average number of organisms or of particular plant species that we see is 12. That is actually what the population density. This quadrant, for example, is one meter, one meter. So we can decide to, uh, the area is one meter square. Now, we cannot say 12 species of this particular plant per meter square. So this will now form the basis of the population word density. The reason is this. Once you get your population density, you know the area of the quadrant. You know the total area of size you want to estimate the to make an estimate of the particular organism, then you can easily get the total number or estimate the total number of, of, of organism in that geographical world location. So let's assume, for example, that the area of our quadrant, as I have said before, is what? One meter square. So we write the one meter square here. Now, the population density in this area, where we take an average sample, for, for example, 50 what? samples of 52 of the quadrant, we take an average and we have eight, for example. Then the total study area that we are going to discuss today, let's assume that we are having 35,000 meter square. Please, this is meter square. How do you now estimate the population of the organism in this area? You go back to the formula. And the formula is actually N, which is what the population to be estimated is a, what is A's total study area? In this case, is what? 35,000. N times N. What is N? Population density times what? 8. Now, what is our area of the quadrant? In this case, is what? 1 meter what, square. So, in this case, is 1 meter. So, we can now do the multiplication and you have your answer. Let me quickly use my mobile phone to do the calculation. And we we'll have the answer. In this case, we have 280,000 of that particular species per what? That what? Area. All right? So please take note. This is a very simple method of carrying out what? The population what? Um, estimation study using what? The quadrant what? Method. The second method we are going to discuss is the capture mark and recapture method. Now, in the capture mark and recapture method, it's often utilized when you're studying organisms that are what? Fast moving. For example, in Nigeria, we can decide to study the population of a particular dog. Let's assume that Nigeria area is the Amazon rainforest. We want to study a particular species or animal that is fast moving. In that particular case, what do you do? You can utilize the capture mark 
we capture what method to estimate the population what total population what um, size of this area. How do you do that? This is the formula. First, you catch a particular organism, you mark them, and you release them into the environment. Remember, first is you catch a particular organism, you mark them, and you release them into the environment. After that, after allowing this organism to freely move and mix with other organisms in the environment, maybe after a month, you can what? Go back to the field, recapture another set of organisms, and in this case, you count the total number of marks in the recapture organism. So that will bring about the formula. This is the number of marks in the first cache over the total world population. Then in your second cache, you now get the number of mark of organisms in the second cache over the total number of that second cache. Remember, when you go to the field for the second time, you will catch both marked and what or marked organisms. So in this case, you now separate the what the mark and you put the number of mark in the second cache all over the total number of what organisms in the second cache. So let's assume that in the first cache you have 300 particular what rodent or Let's just use a rodent. 300 and what? Uh, sorry, 3,300 rodents was captured in, in the first cache in the whole of Amazon. And you now release them back into the environment. After two months, which you assume that they have what? Missed into the environment. Or after three months, you go back to the field and you capture. In the second cache, you caught. 2,800 was organism, and out of this 2,800 organism, 330 was what marked. Then you now apply the formula, which is marked in the first cache all over our total population, then marked in the second cache all over what the total population of what second cache. So what is our mark in the first cache? What is the number of um, first cache? Is what 3,300? You have this. Remember, to get this population, total population size, you have to cross multiply and make this word end the subject of what formula. You can easily do that. Let me just quickly do that here. To cross multiply, you have, now have what? N um, equal to what? M what? N. So you can now divide both sides by what? This small, small letter word, M. So you now have this formula. You can now apply the formula here. M here means what? Number marked in first word cache. All the organisms we actually marked, so we have 3,300 times this N is what? Total number of what? Second cache. So in total number of second cache, we have 2,800 times what? 2,800. All over. This M is what? Number marked in second cache. In the second cache, how many organisms we actually marked? So number mark in second cache is this. They were given, and if you now use utilize this formula, you can now estimate that the total number of what that particular rodent species in this area is actually what thirty thousand what eight hundred. So this formula is a very useful method of what carrying out population what estimation. We will now go into what modeling of what population what growth rates. When we talk about population growth rates, we are simply uh, involving number of births and immigration. I minus what? Number of deaths plus what? Emigration. Or and what? Emigration. So you are talking about the number that we added two beds and number of that was migrated into the area. You add the two together, then you talk about the number of beds and the number that actually was left the area. If you subtract it, if it's positive, it means the population is growing, and if it's negative, it means there's what a population was decline. All right. So this is a very simple way of carrying out. But we are going to be looking at this population growth rate. Is actually what change the word population or change the number or, or the size of population all over what you change the time the n what the t 
All right, let's assume, for example, that we have in 2008 5,000 elephants in South Africa, and in 2023, which is this year, we now have 7,000 what elephants. And you are asked to what determine what the population what growth rate. What will you do? D, the N is actually what changing what the population size, which is the later figure minus what the previous what the or the initial figure, 7,000 minus what which is the value for 2023 minus what 5,000, which is the previous what value all over. Now the previous year, the duration, the year difference is actually what five. 2023 minus 2018, I will now have what? Five. You subtract this, you have 2,000. Then if you carry out the division, you have 40, sorry, 400 elephants per year. It means that every year, 400 what? Elephants was actually added to this what? Group. That, that, that is actually what? The growth what? Rate. Now, in some cases, you may be asked the per capita growth rate. The difference between this and this is this. This one is the population growth rate, the total growth rate in the population every year. Per capita growth rate is actually talking about the individual. He is now assigning down the growth rate to what? Individual organisms. What is the growth rate of individual organism in the population? So in per, per, in per capita growth rate, what you just do is simple. Divide the word population growth rate all over what? The total word population. So in this case, if you want to get the per capita growth rate of this, what is the total pop uh, the population world growth rate? We already have it here, 400. Then the initial population as at 2018 is what? This. And you have what? Your answer as per capita growth rate. All right? If you know some of these concepts are, you need clarification, you can simply send a mail and details will be provided. The few minutes is always to just explain as simple as possible in a precise and concise manner, all right? So we're now going to what? Population growth model. There are various models of explaining what? Population world growth. Number one model we'll talk about is what? Actually, in this class, we'll be discussing just two for the sake of time, because if you want to discuss all the model with examples, it will take more than an hour video. So for this model, we'll be talking about the exponential population growth model, which the general formula is usually this. But in the exponential population growth model, we usually use three formulas, which is A, B raised to power what, C. As the first formula, the second formula is actually A bracket 1 plus R raised to power what, T. You can see the formula on the board. And the third formula is this. Usually, this and this give similar answers. Very close answers. Why, in some cases, depending on the variable that is given, when you want to calculate, you can use this or utilize this, any of the formula, depending on what is given and the kind of question that you are actually what giving. All right? So, in this case, A, what is the meaning of A? This PO or A means what? The initial what? Population. The arrow, K or B, means what? The rate. The rate. Or the common word ratio. Y, T, we know as what? The time. The T, uh, E, in this case, is what? The Euler's what? Number. Or is a constant which is actually 2.71828, all right? So approximately what, 2.7. And just leave it at that. You have an approximate what, answer when you are calculating what, your population growth using what, the exponential what, population growth model. So assuming, let's take a, a look at this simple example. Assuming there were 1,000 fishes in a pond, they had increased to 9,000 after two years. If the fishes are growing exponentially, then how many fishes will be in the pond in three years instead of two years? Assuming the reward 1,000 fishes in the pond, this is actually the initial, initial value, and they had this number had increased to what 9,000 after two years. 
So we are now saying, instead of assuming two years, in two years, what, instead of two years, in two years, what is the number of fish that we are supposed to see in the pond? So we can just decide first. You have to look, we already have the A, which is what the initial population is 1,000. Then for this, we have, this is actually the, what, the final population for two years. So we have the final population for two years, population to be estimated. We have the initial one. We can now get the common ratio or the rate, as we call it, first. Since we know that two years is the time, raised to power two. So we can now get rate first. And how do we do that? This is 9,000. A is 100. We have B as the common ratio. Then we have two years. Raised to power, which is the time, two years, all right? If I use 1,000 to go into this, you have one. 1,000 into this, you have what? Nine. So we now have nine equals to B square. B square is equal to what? Nine. We can now look for the square root of both sides. If I look for the square root of B square, we now have B. If I look for the square root of nine, we have three. So in that case, we now know that, okay, the value of B is what? Three. Now, once you get the value of B, you have the initial value. You can estimate for, for three years. You can estimate for even 10 years and any year that you want. So let's estimate for three years as we are asked to do in the question. Right? In three years, the population is A, B, what? Square. A is what? 1,000. B, as we already calculated here, is what? Three. So in three years, the time is three. Three years to power three is what? 27. And 27 times 1,000 is what? Actually, what? 27,000. We can also do for, for four years, for example. PT equals to what? AB what? Square. So in this case, 1,000 times is T3, B remain 3. But in this case, we are talking about four years. So we now have 1,000 times. To do this, I think you have 81. And our final answer is what? 81,000. So this is for four years. So you can do for as many years as you can. If you have any other question that you want to do, you can send it to our mail.